Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Life Burst podcast, a We Cross podcast where we talk about We Cross, uh, the more competitive side of We Cross. This one's just going to be a mini episode. It's just going to be a quick deck profile, a deck primer, if you will, about the No Limit deck itself. Uh, our goal with these little primers are just to sort of get you a jumping start point into how to play the deck, maybe some advanced tips, as well as deck choices, and just overall feeling of how this deck should be composed of. So that way, when you're building this deck, you can flex it towards your meta and do uh, any sort of thing that you need to do, but you'll probably go down the correct path after watching this one. Now, there's a lot of other deck techs online about, you know, specific, here's the deck that you're going to want to use. And while mine is slightly different here, I do have a list shown on the screen that you can see. Um, this is should be always taken with a grain of salt, in my opinion. My goal here is to help you learn how to play this type of deck, as well as how to build this type of deck. Um, but I'm not here to necessarily tell you this is the one true be-all, be-all type of uh, build for this type of deck. The truth is, in this uh, game, there really is no one set deck list that crushes the rest of this. And to be completely clear here, there is no... Um, large set of data that we can really pull from to say that, ah, this is better than this. The truth is you're going to play smaller tournaments, and because of that, you're going to need to meta game against whatever your specific meta is. So you're gonna to need to be making deck choices that will reflect that. However, that's not to say there's certain cards that might be better for you, and you might wanna know all of your options, not just necessarily what could be uh, used. Now, let's talk about No Limit. No Limit is going to be your basic aggro deck. Now, I want to take that with a grain of salt here because a lot of people do think that aggro is uh, what quote-unquote dumb players use or are what players uh, tend to gravitate when they're new but not experienced enough. I want to get that off the bat straight off. Aggro is not dumb. Uh, and in this game, aggro is quite good. This game is in essence a more aggressive version than you'd think of most card games. It really has maybe about turn four is where most games will end in this. Uh, so that being said, it does lend itself to aggressive strategies because there is no real defensive step in these things. Like, for example, in Magic, where the defender chooses blockers, uh, this game is, in essence, way more aggressive. Uh, the removal is used as a defensive tool and an offensive tool, an innately more powerful offensive tool. So you're going to find that uh, this game is going to lend itself to aggression. And that's where No Limit really shines. No Limit's abilities uh, as a team and what their piece does, their team piece, is innately aggressive things. So... You want to lean into that aggression. And that's going to mean that your deck composition is going to innately be uh, more one drops and two drops. And I'm talking about Signy here, level one Signy and level two Signy, uh, then level three Signies. You're really only going to be leaning on your level three Signies to end the game for you. As such, you're not really expecting to go to a long game, so you have less of those things. Um, I think the right place to talk about this is to talk about uh, Haryana. Now, Harana is, uh, reads very aggressively. If I pull it here out on the list that I have right in front of me, boo-boo! Harana step towards the top. Uh, it's a team no limit, which means that the team ability is attacking Signy on your field to get plus 2,000 power. Basically means that you're going to more or less win every combat step that you end up going into. Um, now whether or not if you decide to team break in the future, uh, is that relevant? I'd say yes. This one is actually one of the ones that is sort of better to be on a team than not. Uh, getting a plus 2,000 on your attack step for all of your attacking Signy is quite good. It's inevitably going to basically say, if you and I are playing parity, uh, that is to say that you are putting out uh, 10,000s and 12,000s at level 3, and I'm putting out 10,000s and 12,000s at level 3. Mine are always going to beat yours. Uh, and I think that is a all right ability in a, in a game where stats kind of matter a little bit more than the average game. Um, 
The enter ability, not team, of course, is going to be draw a card and enter charge one. I don't want you to think about it as an enter charge, though, because it really isn't. You're spending two enter to enter charge one. It's a discount. You're basically getting a rebate. So you should be looking at this level three as it costing one enter. Uh, and when you do that, you realize, oh, I can actually play pretty low to the ground. I don't need to be spending a ton of enter. I don't need to have a store of enter to do my abilities because my level three only costs one. Um, and that inevitably is going to free you to do other stuff in the future, like Lancelot and Hera, which we'll talk more about. Uh, and then you get to draw a card. That's just a little bit of gas, baby. You're going to look for that being like, well, my hand will be empty quite a bit. So getting a little bit of draw here is powerful. Um, and then your action, once a game ability. This L rig is going to gain the ability to, whenever this L rig attacks, you may down two up to level two Signy on your, or sorry, L rigs on your field. If you do, the L rig deals damage to the opponent unless the opponent discards a card with guard at the end of the turn. It's basically an extra attack, but not quite. It doesn't have extra attack triggers. It uh, does a guard, but it's not actually activating a guard. It's just the opponent discarding a guard. Um, and as such, it can actually be. Uh, still guarded against even when you use your team piece, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and so, inevitably, when you look at just those stats straight up, you go, yeah, that's that's pretty aggressive. Uh, I think it's always worth considering your uh, team when you are talking about a center. We're not in a world where we're breaking teams quite yet. So when you do that, you should also be thinking about the assists as an extension to what your center can do. And the assists that this deck does is Ak Akino shines at lane opening, white lane opening, which is quite good lane opening, by the way. Uh, tossing things back into the opponent's hand or putting them directly into trash are usually better than vanishing. And... So Akino doing that type of thing, just basically more or less reading an unconditional lane opening, uh, also lends itself towards aggression. And you'd think that card drawing does not lend itself towards a, towards a, aggression, uh, the card drawing in this case coming from Ray. But if you look at Ray's assists, it actually does kind of lean itself towards aggression. You inevitably will blow through your hand pretty quickly, and this being a little bit of sort of like powering up the gas just to go a little bit longer does help you for aggression um innately ray also has some options that will allow you to um use her as removal she has a absolute zero for example as level two which puts a uh, card on the bottom of the deck by the way probably one of the more powerful versions of removal um and that is quite good while we're talking about the assists, let's talk about uh, what assists I think are, are correct for this deck. Inevitably, I think you're always going to use Akino Rock and Akino Bye Bye. Uh, if we're talking about future results that we've seen from Japan, basically, this is standard. You're never going to stray from this. The Rays, on the other hand, you have a lot of choices in. Um, your Rays are going to basically either be uh, the one that draws you two cards um and the one that draws you two cards and makes the opponent discard a card or is the one that um makes your uh make bottoms one of your opponent's signies innately um this gives you the gas that you need to do now you have a little bit of flexibility into what you want to do you can see actually in my deck list that i'm here and i'm purposely being a little fancy in this deck list for examples um i actually like the level one ray that makes the opponent discard a card i think interacting with the opponent a little bit potentially getting rid of guards for example is quite worth it um and we would be remiss not to talk about the team pieces that you get from this now the team piece that you're going to be the one that everyone's going to be using over this a lot of people call it broken it's not broken but it is very good is glory grow uh to be clear here glory grow you can use, it doesn't matter if your assists are level two or not. You can glory grow as long as they're level one or more. And it's going to basically say that your uh, center L rig is going to get the ability to do double crush and the opponent can't guard this turn. Um, that is very, very strong. And again, pushes that idea of aggression, especially because uh, this team can use it and none of the other teams can use it. That is the goal of the deck is to just do as much damage as possible. You should note, however, with this piece, uh, that while it does not allow the opponent to guard, it does still allow for damage prevention. And the way that Double Crush works with damage prevention 
is if it were to deal damage and crush a life cloth, it crushes two life cloth instead. So you don't need two instances of protection in order for this thing to stop the double crush. You actually only need one instance of protection. So for example, uh, bang, oh God, uh, I can't remember the one. It's the level two bang that, um, that stops uh, damage prevention and you can usually do two instances of it is very good against this type of deck. Uh, so watch out for damage prevention uh, before you use this ability. Um, if the opponent has a assist that might do damage prevention, you might consider holding off for a turn to do this to see if you can bait them doing it early and then doing this type of thing. Um, now, I think right now as it stands, and I should let you all know that we're being recorded on set 01. We haven't turned to set 02 yet. I think your two other options that you could do for your second piece is either going to be to the top or is going to be Kirikirum. Uh, Kirikirum is the piece that allows you to uh, attack phase or main phase timing, draw a card, and enter charge one. Uh, that'll allow you to do some kind of cool tricks on your opponent's turn if you ever need to. Plus, it is just bog standard and okay effect. You'll never go wrong with it. You'll use it every game. Uh, so it is worth mentioning that this is sort of just like the bar. If you're going to have a second piece, have this or have... Uh, something better so or i'm sorry i should say something better you should be looking for something more um effective in the game and that's where i think go to the top comes in go to the top is a three enter charge or three enter cost piece that uh basically says if your opponent's l rig is level three or more you're gonna go ahead and uh enter burn them three that means getting rid of three of their enter uh and you get to search your deck for a uh, specific signy put in your hand. Uh, this deck list benefits from the go to the top uh, because it has stuff like Mars and Unga Bunga uh, and Rose Quartz that'll allow you to sort of like high top end scenario of trying to lane enter or go around things with Assassin. Um, and sometimes you can just pick a guard out of it just so you can survive a turn and keep going. Um, but it, it benefits from that. But it also does the thing where it's it allows you to r suddenly remove Enter from the opponent. And then they were like, oh, well, I really needed my damage prevention uh, <laughs> assist L rig, And you've just deprived them of that. So that's worth mentioning. I think it's slightly better, although you definitely won't use it every game. And, uh, and that's something to keep in mind. Uh, but it's meta dependent. If you're ending up being in races all the time, you might end up wanting to just go with Kirikirum. Um, so let's get to, we're past the L-Rig deck, and, and and to be clear here with the L-Rig deck, that's the most important part of the deck, right? Like, it is a pretty solid, and I think what you're seeing on screen is probably what you're going to want to stick to with the couple variations that I, I have said. I wouldn't necessarily go into any of these other ones like... Um, like the ones that give assassin or or the ones that tap down things like it's just it seems pretty to be pretty stand bog standard that this is what you're going to want to choose even in the future japanese lists um we will quickly talk about team breaking is it worth it to break a team i don't think so not right now anyways um there's no aggression or or benefit that you're going to get from going into other colors that you don't already have here uh and none are outweighed by your team's uh piece current uh well, let's talk about the future stuff too do you want to what about when ray comes out and aki akio akino comes out uh the answer is akino is probably pretty bad uh it is not used at all in the japanese deck lists in the future and it is kind of awkward that your team wants to be very aggressive based off of what your piece does uh but you are also being very defensive with akino um, I also don't exactly love Hirana's um, assists. I think they're okay, but they're nothing amazing. You have a very solid uh, Akino assist and a very solid Ray assist. So uh, I think that's probably the choice that you want to go for. Now, do you want to do Ray as a as the center? And the answer could be yes. Ray is a very interesting one when it comes out in set three, and you might want to do that. But however, I will say this. Ray is a control deck, Akino is a mid-range deck, 
and Hirana is an aggro deck. So mm, your deck's not going to look like at all. It's not one of these ones where you can swap out the center and kind of have a marginally different deck that can help you meta game against your opponents. You are going to have a very different deck every time and you're going to need to replace your Signy deck almost completely every different time. Uh, that being said, I actually have seen most success from Ray being off team and being more of a mono blue broken team color. Uh, where you're doing Madoka and this and also um, Tamago, and you're focusing on just freeze uh, synergies um, or discard synergies. It works. Trust me. It's very it's very brutal when you, when you get it off. It's not always good because it kind of auto loses to aggro decks. Uh, but I would say if you're looking for a Ray Center in the future, that might be a way that you want to go for. All right, I think we covered literally everything that needs to be covered in the uh, L-Rig deck itself. So let's just talk about the main deck here. Now, as you're going to see on the screen, I've got uh, options for you here, and I'm going to run through them very quickly uh, as to why they're good or why you might want to choose them. I'm also going to talk about some options afterwards that aren't on the screen, uh, and I will tell you uh, these are replaceable things and that you can swap them out. Now, I'm going to just do this in a, in a very strange order. Um, the... Level 1s, you've got more level 1s than you normally do. Uh, in this case, I think we have 18. Uh, and in as far as the level 2s go, we have 10, and I know that we have 10 uh, level tw level 3s. Um, that's not normal. Normally, you have more than that. Uh, but we are more of a low-curved aggro deck, and that's what we're focusing on. Well, we're going to talk about the curve. Uh, we're not going to talk about the curve of the deck as much as we're going to talk about the core of the deck here. Uh, and that's going to be uh, basically Romet... Ramiel, Romel, uh, Lancelot, Hera, and uh, Rose Quartz. These are the core of the deck. And you'll notice that all of them have a very similar ability. They remove a Signy off the field. Uh, and that's exactly what you're doing in this type of deck. You want to focus on attacking through open lanes that you're forcing open. You actually will win most games that you play against, even against decks that are walling you and trying to control you, if they spend too long trying to do that, you will inevitably find a path forward and, and, and move forward with it. I should have added in the in the core of the deck is also uh, Deafening Inferno. That spell, awesome. It's good in all these other decks too that I, I play, but specifically this deck because it has a team ability. Um, the goal of the deck is to just sort of like open up lanes and attack. You don't really care about what happens after. You're not trying to get too fancy. Um, let's talk about some of your level ones that aren't uh, Romel. And what do they do for the deck? Uh, there's a Percival in here. And that's basically just to add some white for Akino. Bye bye. Uh, I think it's actually probably better to have four sources of white in here than the two that I have. But I am risking it for the biscuit, to be honest with you. Then we've got uh, Sifa. Now, Sifa is an interesting one because Sifa is just got a good life burst, right? That's that's all it's there for. It's very replaceable in the future. But its life burst is genuinely good. Vanishing a target's Signy uh, with 8,000 or less. It's going to do most Signy that you're going to need. It's going to lane open pretty early on, and that's going to help you. Um, basically, you should have the mindset of this. It doesn't matter what I play in a lane. If the lane is open, it deals damage to the opponent. That is the thought process here. So this is a very replaceable card. It could be replaced in the future with better stuff. But in the meantime, while we're waiting for better level one fillers, it has a good life burst. When we talk about other level ones, uh, of course, there's Romel. Romel is just, it gets outclassed pretty quickly uh, by things on the field. But that doesn't change the fact that you still probably should run four. Um, it kills quite a bit of level ones and gets in there. Uh, that being said, it gets walled by a lot of things, but not so much. The risk here is better than the, the, the reward is better than the risk here. So you should be doing that anyways. Uh, you've got servants. Servants are an auto include in pretty much every deck. Again, I, there are lots of times in this deck specifically where I've played them as just they're in an open lane, I attack and they, they deal damage to you. So don't be afraid to get aggressive with these guys if you need to. They have the bonus of being able to do that. Uh, and then the last one that we have here is uh, Arius. Now, Arius is an interesting one. I needed some life bursts to fill it out. I figured this is it's got an OK life burst drawing a card and, and are charging one. Uh, it's not fantastic. 
uh, but it does the job. And it also attacks and can buff something. So sometimes worth it on that front. Um, especially if you're up against a black deck and they're doing some sort of removal in their life burst area that's like a, you know, power disin de degrading effect. So worth mentioning that it's okay there. Highly replaceable. A lot of these level ones are highly replaceable in the future. The only one that I really like is Servant and uh, Romel. Uh, moving on to level two, you got the meat and potatoes of the deck, I think. This is one of the few decks where I actually care about my level twos. Lancelot, Hera, uh, and then, again, just like in the same case, you also have the uh, Inferno, or what is it called here? Let me pull it up. Uh, you have the level twos that are Volcanic, Natural Crystal. Um, this just has a life burst. It's a 10,000 with a good life burst. That's it. And bear in mind, a lot of this life first you'll see are free, and that's a that's a trick. You want to be low to the ground, so the free life bursts get the nudge here over the ones that cost some amount of mana. Even the ones that cost some amount of mana can do more versatile threats. Um, Hera and Lancelot. This is kind of an interesting conversation. Lancelot is a better card than Hera, and you'll see that I'm running for Hera and two Lancelot. I don't want eight of the effect in this deck, although you could run eight of the effect and I, no one would do a second thought at that kind of thing. Uh, but Hera is better than Lancelot in a mono red deck. And here's your reasonings why. One, it does not matter that it's costing a red over a colorless because you're playing a mono red deck. Two, you get to do it on the attack phase, which means that you are depriving the opponent enter on their defense step. You know, again, the way that it works is you go into attack phase, you do all of your attack, pre-attack phase triggers, then they do their defense phase triggers, and then you go into attacks. And when you attack, that's when this is going to en enact. So because of that, you inevitably get advantage of depriving them of that enter. So it is better here. Plus, you get the upside of occasionally, if they, for some reason, don't deal with it immediately, you get to do it again. Um, so that's your level twos moving right into your level threes. Uh, your best level three here is Rose Quartz. Rose Quartz will remove pretty much everything on the field. And that's sort of what you're trying to get at is you really have a weakness of not really being able to remove anything higher than 8,000 on the general aspect with red. Um, but Rose Quartz and Deafening Inferno get around that and get higher, and that's sort of just the last top-end gamage removal that you're going to be looking for. It should be noted that Rose Quartz also has an ability when it attacks, you get to discard some cards and draw some cards. Um, mostly that's going to be looking for either more removal for l uh, some late-game lane opening or is going to be looking for um, guards just to get you an extra turn, and then you'll win the game on the subsequent turn. Um... You also have, uh, you'll see that I have various level threes after here. I've got uh, Mars, I've got Unga Bunga, and I've got, uh, oh God, how do I pronounce this one? Let me pull it up so I can read it verbatim. Katsuchi, Katsuchi, God, I'm so good at these names, guys. Um, Mars is there for me to get Assassin in the late game. I won't always use it for that. It is very very much gonna be enter most of, the, of its life uh but on the off chance i need to get access to some assassin it's there um Kats katsuguchi is got a very unique uh life burst effect where it brings cards back from your graveyard and lane fills uh that helps against the aggressive decks a little bit so i'm sort of metting this deck against no limit right now in my own current meta um and it also has the ability to bring back Rose Quartz. Rose Quartz, uh, if, <laughs> I'm happy to have Rose Quartz number five and six in the deck. Uh, and then Unga Bunga, which is basically Rose Quartz five and six. Not quite as good, but it does the job and gets some lane removal. I have only ever used the Double Crush once in my life. Uh, a lot of the times I use it as bait. Uh, and I put it out there, I do the double crush, knowing that it's going to get killed, but I got to force the opponent's hand sooner rather than later. So I do that kind of thing. It's a juicy target for the opponent to hit. Cool. It saves my Rose Quartz for later down the line. Um, and that's that's the current deck. You've also got the um, the Deafening Infernos, but like I said, that's a staple. It's just lane 
removal and that'll help you uh, get in your attacks. Um, let's talk a little bit about deck strategy and only ever tiny about a deck strategy here. You're going to want to look at does everything do a lane, open a lane and then get me there. If it doesn't open a lane, it's not worth it. Um, that's sort of my hard critical opinion of no limit. I don't want to try to do anything super fancy. Uh, this again, this deck list is as fancy as I'm getting. Um, I'm not going to do things like, for example, put uh, Arcwains in it or anything like that. Um, and in fact, Hamel is going to be one of the ones that I'm saying you could put in your deck, and I I don't like it in there. Uh, I'm not doing anything fancy like that. But um, you're going to want to think about how do I open up this lane? How do I tack through? Over and over and over again, that should be just where your mindset is at. I would also say that there's a caveat. You're going to want to try to work out your bombs. So, for example, you might play Lancelot before you play Hera. The reason being that you want the opponent to deal with that Lancelot and then the Hera stick. Same thing with Rose Quartz. You might play something like uh, your Mars before you play Rose Quartz, and that's to make a deal with it. You're going to have to make these calls in the moment. Sometimes it's just worth putting out these cards and doing the, the, the type of attack. Another thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to lane open twice. It is better to, much, much better, to have two lanes open than it is to have one single lane open. When you have one single lane open, you open yourself up to them having a, a reaction here and then on their defense step, removing the card that's in the lane opener and you've done nothing for that turn. Doing two, on the other hand, is much less chance of that happening. Doing three is even better. Lord knows if you can pull it off. There are times where you're going to do that kind of thing and you're going to say, yep, I'm, I'm putting three out here. Do you have the answer? And they'll have the answer. And you shouldn't be dissuaded by it because you're like, cool, I've burned them out of answers, which means that the next time I push my aggro, it will work out. Um, here's some more things that you should know about. Freeze. Freeze is the natural enemy of this deck. You want to, uh, if you're playing against this deck, do two freezes. Two freezes are better than one freeze. One freeze you just go ahead and go, cool, it's on my field. I'm energizing it from field. It's gone. I play something else. Uh, two freezing, you're looking at it and you're going to go, well, now I've got to choose to burn my hand in order to, uh, to get no value out of this. But you probably should sacrifice it on your once a turn sacrifice that you get, um, even though you're not going to get any enter from it to sacrifice that second or, Lord forbid, third freeze thing. Um, another thing you should know is Ngubuga Rises. And Rise is a different Signy entirely. You just need to... It doesn't it doesn't take over the Signy. It just has to have a Signy there for you to play it. Which means that it doesn't matter if you're downed and frozen. If you rise over on it, it's, it's, it's a new Signy so you can attack with it. Um, that is pretty much everything you're going to need to know. With the exception of some other card stuff that is other cards selections. Like I said, you could put Hanel in there. Hanel has the is a level one Zigni that has basically the ability to uh, pay and enter, and then you get to look at the top three cards of your library and put a Zigni into play. It also has a life burst that does more or less the same thing. You could play this, and I think it's sometimes fine, especially if you're playing against a lot of no limit, to do that type of thing. That way you can just keep dumping creatures, excuse me, Signy, into the uh, field. That being said, it does really nothing on its own to push out aggro, so I don't love it. Um, it's probably the least option I would do. If you were going to need to, for some reason, replace some of these level ones, I would try to put more personal Percival into the deck. If you can't put more Percival into the deck, I think that Umagawa, uh, Crimson General, it's a level one Signy that during its your during your turn gets plus seven thousand power, so it's attacking for ten thousand as a level one. Is probably just straight up better. Um, it attacks really, it attacks very large. It's all like if I'm not getting a lane clearing, I at least want my attack to be successful. <laughs> um, outside of that, if we go into level twos, I think your options are Celadon Phantom Terra Beast. It has a pretty good 
life burst effect that allows you to pay two if you do vanish target signy from your opponent's field with 12,000 or less. Uh, it also lets you uh, discard a card. You have to discard a card when you play it. And then when it dies, you get to draw a card. Um, inevitably, it kind of it goes into the wash. You discard a card, you draw a card. It helps a little bit with selection, I guess. But it's not like it's not it's not awesome or or bad i but it is a twelve thousand attacker and like i said if you're not going to lane clear and this one does lane clear on its life burst i'd rather you attack successfully i have seen people use uh focalar azor evil that's the ten thousand level two uh that has a life burst that downs two of your opponent's signy on the field and then you get to draw a card i've seen people use that to to good success especially in the japanese lists i think it's a little fancy i don't think it's necessary but it will be good if you are against an aggressive meta. Having that life burst pop up and then just being able to stop someone's aggro and then you take command of the game by aggroing back, you'll win that race. As for your level threes go, I've got two with life burst over here. We've got Tada Katsu, Crimson General. Uh, it's a level 13, so it's a sort of a wall. Nothing's ever really going to beat it naturally anyways. It's got a good life burst effect. Uh, you go ahead and vanish your target's opponent signy with 10,000 or less um, if you're looking to fill in slots this one's a good one i've seen it even used in set zero six no limits so yeah it's definitely fine the other one is tobiel tobiel fully armed uh, it's got a good life burst effect you can vanish target up signy even though upped is the worst word in this uh card and you get to draw a card if it's if you d can't do that um, whenever it attacks, other Signy on your field can get 5,000 power, and when it enters, you discard two cards and get to draw two cards. It basically lets you search for your more powerful cards like Rose Quartz or uh, your in Deafening Infernos. Um, and its life burst ability is pretty okay. Uh, this is my suggestions as to what you'd want outside of that. For Signy, I only have one other suggestion, which is a spell, and that's Trouble. If you are somehow running some amount of blue and you're more of a blue uh, blue and red focus deck, Trouble is actually a pretty good one. It costs two enter, you get to draw three cards. I don't know why you would need to draw more cards outside of your ray. Uh, it's <laughs> Life Burst Effect, by the way, is down two Signy on your opponent's field. Um, I don't know why you would need to <laughs> draw more uh, than what you already have on ray. But if for some reason you did need to just get some extra burn, I could see trouble as in your deck as a one of if you also have the blue enter to support it. Um, those are the cards I would suggest to fill out if you don't have exactly what's on my deck list or something similar to it uh, with the deck. Let's talk about the deck's future. This deck has the longest shelf life out of all the teams. It is not a hidden fact that around set four, uh, Domius Machina is going to show up and kind of start taking over the meta. But unlike all the other decks, which sort of get downgraded from s s tier one to tier 1.5, some of them tier two, uh, no limit stays tier one. Uh, and then inevitably it goes a little further into the future and we hit set six. And I think no limit drops to tier 1.5 around that time with the introduction of dream teams, but it's still pulls in numbers so it's not a terrible choice i would say if you needed a uh if you wanted an aggro deck because you are just learning the game and you just want to learn you just want like something to play and 90 percent of the time the correct decision is to attack uh then this would be the deck for you if you like aggro decks speed decks this is the deck for you if you like having a deck on the side that you can give a friend or that you can um, play randomly to just sort of free yourself up from the control mid-range combo grind of things, uh, then this is also a good deck. I personally play uh, play Uchu and my wife plays Karjaki and we use this as a third deck to just sort of like, all right, people are starting to maybe get used to our, our shit. We should switch up to something that we can... Uh, we can get less a little metagamed against. Uh, speaking of getting metagamed against, you should know that it is not impossible to metagame against this deck. If this deck is tier one, which it is, because it has all of its options are good, its assists are good, its center is good, its deck is versatile and redundant and good, um, then you should also know that it's not impossible to metagame against this deck. What you'll want to look to do 
is put more level twos that are 10,000 power or higher uh, and l level threes that really are just sticky and do not go like Arcwane or something. Um, and it's possible to just sort of do that type of thing to this deck. The problem is the deck still can function and still can beat you with a pretty close 50-50 win rate <laughs> with, with even when you're deck teching against it. But if you are a smarter player in terms of competitiveness, you can probably find a way around those walls, a way around those shadows, a way around the inner starving and stuff. Um, and that's what we're going to hope to help you out with. So guys, if you have any questions whatsoever about how to play this type of deck, you can always message down below and uh, leave a comment below. Uh, and we'll talk about it at some point in our next future. Our next podcast that we're going to be putting out, Tiffany and I are going to be talking about how to be not necessarily aggro, but how to do offensive in, in this type of game and how this game is innately more of an offensive game than you'd think. And that would be a great also way to level up your no limit game plan. With that, I am Andrew and I am here for the Life Burst podcast. And may you always flip a Life Burst. Life Burst. Life Burst. Life Burst. Life Burst.